Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. Jake Ludington here at OSCON, and while we frequently talk about WordPress as the primary content management system in our world, that doesn't mean it is the only content management system. And I'm here with the guys from Tiki to talk about why you might want to use their CMS instead. Hi, thanks. So uh, basically, we like to describe our, our content management system as an all-in-one collaboration and content management system. So what we mean by all-in-one is that unlike other systems, such as WordPress, which use extensions and plugins to grow your functionality and website, Tiki is an all-in-one model. So it's all in the core. It's all community maintained. And we feel that that brings a lot of cohesiveness within the open source community itself. And at the same time, gives a lot of power and strength to the user, so empowers the user to start small and expand and scale very easily because everything's community maintained and everything's integrated and tested together. So very yeah. powerful. When you, when you say that it's all in the core, mm -hmm. uh, does that mean if there are features that I want that are not already built in, I can't add them? Definitely. So the community is very open. We like to say that we are the wiki way of building software. So commit access is very easy. So if you want to come in and say, I have this new concept, you know, the community will freely give you commit access. And it's basically a, uh, a meritocracy. So if you have a new idea, you come in, you, you know, suggest it, implement it, and you'll get feedback, you'll get mentorship from the community, and you'll quickly be rolled out in the next feature and the next uh, version. And we have very fast rollouts every six months. So you will see your feature be rolled out very rapidly if it is something new and that the community feels is, uh, is worth being added to the core. And so you talk about that this is a uh, tool for both collaboration and publishing. Um, and I, what does the collaboration side mean? Is that like forums? Is that like comment systems? Is that like what, what is what is the collaborative aspect? Well, basically, all you've described and much more, much more. So, uh, oftentimes people will say, "I need a collaboration system or I need a publishing system," and we see both as often blurring the lines together. So you'll have you know a public website where publishing is needed but some of that publishing is built through collaboration and then needs to be published. So uh, collaboration features were you know, standard wiki, but an enterprise level wiki with really fine grained permission structure. So it's not just everybody could edit and everybody could see, you could really create workspaces and define teams and who has access to what, so very powerful that way. Uh, beyond that, you, know, you have your standard commenting system, your forum system, uh, you know, uh, internal friendship network, things of that nature to really you know, spur on a community. And then on the, on the uh, publishing side, well, there's the wiki, which is also could be used for publishing, uh, a multi-user blogging platform, an articling system, and uh, many other sort of su subtype uh, publishing type uh, features. So in some ways, this is uh, maybe a little bit more like SharePoint in the sense that it is uh, more vague in, in definition of how it could be used rather than uh, WordPress, which is very specifically for a blog. Uh, how is it? How is it the same or different than than using like a SharePoint type solution? Yeah, I, I would say that uh, like for SharePoint, it's a lot about like a, a really good file manager and organizing things and uh, making forms. And that they also recently added a wiki engine. So we started from the wiki part, where it's a lot about collaborating on text, it's collaborating through web pages. And then we also added a file gallery. We have a file management system with web dev and check in, check out. So we covered that functionality. And for the form part, we have what's called trackers, which is for issue tracking or bug tracking. But it sort of became like, you know, as features grow, it's this whole like database system. So you create your database, you create your forms, you create your reports. And the cool thing is all that, all that is done in, through wiki pages. So basically, the end user becomes like a, almost a programmer where he can build his own things, makes his own reports, and he doesn't have to like ask you know, for help, and then it's all in the wiki page, so if ever there's some changes, you can just roll back to the previous version. So it's, it's really about uh, empowering the power user to, uh, to, 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 to suit his needs and to solve his problems. So you might scare a few people with the idea that they have to become a de developer, but you're not, you're not saying that they actually have to know how to write code in order to implement this. Absolutely not. The, the idea really is, is to, well, any tool is really to reduce the technical, you know, the, how hard it is to do something. So it's just a tool to reduce that level. Of course, you know, maybe somebody may not feel comfortable like to, to imagine like a database or imagine a special feature, um, but certainly, so, but if it's a simple, like just a form, a simple, like it could be something really, I need a registration list. I'm, I'm organizing an event and I want people to register and to send in that information. That's the type of thing that any, any user should be able to do. There's a lot of the wiki type solutions out there that are sort of a hosted environment, like PBWiki um, or WetPaint or things like that. Are, is this a solution like those, or is this something where I download it and I put it on my own server? So, so there's really two options for now. There's no 
uh, Tiki.com yet. There's no you know, easy out of the box solution, but basically uh, it is uh, runnable. So it's a lamp. It runs on lamp. So Linux, uh, uh, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. Uh, and basically, you could run it on shared hosting. So very cheap hosting if you if that's what you want. And it's also discoverable on Fantastico and other type installer panels. So that's actually quite a, a big way where people discover us. But there's no .com yet. But that's definitely something that the um, the community or uh, or actual commercial you know entities are are looking into for the future. It would never be like really Tiki.com where yeah. it's, you have to get it from Tiki. It could be an ecosystem of people offering uh, hosted services. But since it's so easy to host uh, a PHP application, it's you know you could just go to any hosting company and then one that supports like one of the installers and you have it. So it's it's more or less the same need. You have your own domain name. It gives you emails with it. So there's not really a, a need as much as as for something like PBWiki, for example. How well does your application handle scaling um, in terms of, you know, the, the big problem that a lot of people see with WordPress is they set it up on a reasonably uh, cheap hosting solution and all of a sudden um, they hit the front page of Hacker News and their site goes down. Do you guys have caching built in so that to, to help avoid that issue? So we have several levels of caching. So there's a Smarty cache which is built in, which basically takes all the code and, and puts it in, in PHP. There's also the wiki page cache. So for example, anytime you go to a wiki page, there may be some code there to say include here the last five blog posts or something like that. You can put a cache on that for one minute, five minute, whatever. So you, it, it won't have to hit the database each time. So there's several levels of, of caching. And then you can also, if you're going to have a site with lots of traffic, you can get you can install some of any of the, uh, the standard like uh, PHP caches, things like APC or Xcache. And we have actually in the admin panel a place to, so you can check how your APC is doing. So, you know, are you running out of memory and stuff like that? So it's a combination, like everything with performance, it's a combination of things, of little things, and looking at where's the bottleneck and just solving that. But you are, are at least uh, looking at the idea that you shouldn't have to hit the database every time the page loads. Absolutely. Correct. Yep, that's the case. And if somebody was to, say, have a WordPress site and want to move to Tiki, how hard is that to do? Well, there is a, uh, so the community uh, actively works at uh, converters, so for WordPress and MediaWiki. So if you have a MediaWiki uh, wiki engine and want to convert to Tiki because you feel the features aren't, aren't strong enough and want to move to something more powerful, there is, the community does maintain a converter, converter and sending for WordPress because we also feel that the use case is similar. Well, you start small with WordPress and then the WordPress, uh, the website needs to grow into functionality that maybe WordPress doesn't support or the plugins aren't, you know, aren't stable enough for. So basically we know that that's a clear use case and uh, we've, uh, the community maintains a converter for it. Yeah. All right. Well, great. Thanks guys. Locker Gnome coverage of OSCON is brought to you by HP.